What's up guys, everything Apple Pro here, and here I've got the brand new Samsung Galaxy Note 5. It features a stunning redesign, no longer has a removable micro SD or battery, but it is beautiful. It sure is a gorgeous device, and today I'm going to be testing the durability when dropping it and comparing the results to the iPhone 6 Plus. Now, the other day we did the same with the Galaxy S6 Edge Plus, and I gotta say the durability was top notch. Now this thing actually features a thicker bezel, it's slightly uh, larger device, slightly heavier, so I'm curious to see how this thing is going to do compared not only to the iPhone 6 Plus but also to the S6 Edge Plus which we did the other day. Now we're going to be starting at a waist height drop on both the side and uh, face down and then the rear shell as well then go up to a head height say you're talking on the phone and your phone drops and then a 10 foot drop. It's a bit excessive I know but it's always good to know your phone can withstand those heights when dropping them. So I actually feel really bad doing this because these are brand new devices and I just I feel bad breaking them but I want to know how the durability compares with the Corning Gorilla Glass 4 on the Note 5 and the reinforced aluminium compared to the standard ion strength and glass on the 6 Plus and just that malleable aluminium. I mean, Apple puts this really soft metal into these guys. They bend and they don't do very well when dropping them. So I want to see how these two compare. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The Galaxy Note 5 has a very thick bezel. I think it'll do very good and it's slightly raised around the edges. So the screen, unlike the Galaxy S6 Edge Plus, will not impact with the ground first. But let's go ahead and start with the side drop test. And this is about waist height. So taking it out of your pocket and this thing slips out of your hand. And personally for me, when I step out of my car, sometimes I'll keep my phone on my lap and I'll forget about it and boom, Boom, there it goes, drops. Anyways, so uh, Galaxy Note 5 first. Waist tight, three, two, one. So uh, conveniently remove your stylus just by dropping your phone. So the impact was right here. And this material is very tough. When you do drop it, it doesn't make it all jagged and it's not so bad as the iPhone. But anyways, Everything in working order, stylus works, no problem. Let's go ahead and do the same to the iPhone. So here's the iPhone 6 Plus. This thing is in mint condition, brand new. Hurts to do this, but let's do it. All right, so waist height, also dropping on its side. Three, two, one. These things definitely make a lot more noise when being dropped. So it was a pretty even hit. Wow, I mean, look at that. This thing just dents in right away. There's a very apparent dent, whereas on the Note 5, the material was more rigid and it's thicker, so it's not as noticeable. It's a little disappointing to me. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to the head height. I know it's not a very common occurrence to drop your phone so high, but it does happen, even to me personally. So it's good to know that your phone can survive it. And this is Gorilla Glass 4, it does so well. Anyways, head height, let's go ahead and drop this guy. Three, two, one. Ouch. That hurt. That hurt to listen to. All right. So again, the S Pen did pop out. As you can see, the wear is not too bad. You can wipe off most of it and it looks almost as good as new. So everything still works. Display is not cracked. Like I said, it has a very thick border, so it's very unlikely that the impact will reach the display. I'm really rooting for this guy that it survives the entire trial. And the iPhone 6 Plus, as much as I love my iPhone, I don't know. I don't know, this thing it just isn't that durable, so I don't know if it'll survive this. But head height, here we go in three, two, one. Okay, I don't even know that, that hurt. <laughs> Oh wow, so it did chip the corner right here. There's a small chip. There are more dents and the screen assembly is coming out just a little bit right here. That was a pretty brutal hit and it's apparent. And this material is so soft. The whole phone is a little bent. Like it's, it goes up right here a little bit. Okay, so clearly, even at this point, we can see that the Note 5, you know, it's structurally rigid. This thing seems very flimsy. And uh, damage-wise, as you can see, it's definitely worse on the iPhone. The display did chip up here. So for this next test, I'm going to mix things up a little bit. Before we shatter the displays, dropping them on the edges, we're going to do a waist height face down test and then rear face down test to see if the camera lenses will crack or if the rear uh, assembly on here will crack because it's made out of glass. And then we're going to go and do the same thing with a head height. 
Okay, so starting with the Note 5, let's go ahead and do this. I have high hopes for it. Gorilla Glass 4 is super tough. Can't wait until the 5th, it'll be even better, but okay, about a waist height. Oh, drop, here we go. Three, two, one. Wow, okay, so my prediction was correct. The uh, bezel took the impact before the screen did. It's apparent by all these chips around it right here. You know, the screen is looking good, working, everything's in order, this thing is solid. I feel very confident dropping this thing, as funny as that is to say. So let's go ahead and do the same with the iPhone 6 Plus. And here we go. This guy, I don't have as much hopes for. It's proven itself to be not the most durable, but Again, the same thing, face down, drop test in three, two, one. Solid hit, solid hit. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's disappointing. This thing did not do as well. There it goes. It has spider webbed, although the cracks don't look as bad as they did on the last one. So it's still usable. It's just going to be a little annoying having to replace this. These screens are not cheap. So let's go ahead and keep the test going. See if the rear sapphire crystal glass on the back can survive the same fall. And then I'm just going to keep going, see how long this thing can stay alive before it completely zones out and dies. And now the rears. I want to test the rear shell. This one is Corning Grill Glass 4. This one is a mixture of uh, metals, mostly aluminum, and it's very soft. I want to see how these guys hold up to a waist high drop. All right, so I'm going to do these guys simultaneously. You know, three, two, one. Nice little flip, dude. All right, so this looks good. Oh, I spoke too soon. So looks like there is a hairline crack that appeared right there. The entire thing didn't fracture, and you know you can't really can't really grip it. So it's not likely to bother you, but that did poorer than I thought it would. The camera glass is doing good though. So on this guy, camera's okay. It was chipped on the corner right here on the camera, so I know it did impact that, but let's go ahead and move this up to the head height and see what it takes to crack that camera glass. All right, so uh, about a head height right here. I'm gonna add a little spin to them so they do land on their rear. And three, two, one. Oh, yeah, totaled. So, that that's what it took to break the camera glass on the 6 plus and that's what it took to completely crack the rear glass on the note 5 although there are chips around the camera that is doing good better than the 6 plus so not only is your frame all bent in there's these little you know indentations everywhere you can no longer take any good pictures without a new lens so sad to see but clever winner here is the note 5 as well although it does look a lot worse. At least you can still take pictures on it. So after that last rear drop, the Galaxy Note 5, a very, very thin hairline uh, crack appeared up here. It's very difficult to see, but the phone is no longer turning on. Although it does vibrate when turning on, the screen no longer works. So this thing is completely pooped, no longer works. But there is a crack stemming from about right here and it goes right up. So the rear did break, but the phone no longer responds. I'm a little disappointed the S6 Edge Plus did a lot better. Although the glass shape is still looking to be okay, there is a crack and no longer works. So the iPhone at this point is the winner, no matter how battered it looks, how broken this thing is still battling on. So let's keep going and see what it takes to completely destroy both of these phones. And so I know the screen doesn't work. It no longer responds to anything. I just want to see what it will take to completely shatter the display and completely make the 6 Plus stop working. This thing is a tank still chugging along. Okay, so a 10 foot drop one at a time. I'm gonna add a little spin to it, starting with the Note 5, see if we can finally shatter that display. So here we go. And iPhone 6 Plus at the same time. So three, two, one. Both heavy impacts. You can see lots of glass fragments everywhere. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the Note 5, see the damage we dealt. Ouch. Uh, notification light is still on. This thing is not responding to anything. I tried hard resetting it. Nothing. And now fractures are way worse. Sad to see this thing no longer works. So, here are my last hope, 6+. plus. That's definitely a lot worse. 
And nope, there are no survivors when it comes to drop tests. Hello. Oh, I hear. So I hear voiceover. This thing is working. It is working, just the LCD has gone out. So looks like the digitizer still works somehow underneath all of this. I can see that the light's on, it's just not responding. This thing has the voiceover on. You know, it's completely toasted. So guys, that's just about it. I mean, I don't see what else I can do to these guys. No survivors here. But if I were to say which one did survive, which one did win this test, it would be the 6 Plus. It stayed alive longer than the Galaxy Note 5, although the display was more prone to shattering. Unlike the Note 5, which held up well, and when it does get shattered, it's easier to see the display underneath. It's not as bad. All the chunks don't start falling out like the 6 Plus. So although both phones do show promise of life, uh, well, the iPhone 6 Plus is the only one working, and the voiceover keeps saying things, interrupting me while I'm speaking. You know, 5, on the other hand, all it has is a notification light that's staying blue, and it's not responding to anything. No stimuli. This thing is completely toasted. I don't know what to do with it. So, clear winner here in survivability, the 6 Plus. In terms of durability, the Note 5 has the advantage. The display took a lot more abuse to get to the state where it's at versus the iPhone 6 Plus. Uh, although it's not as good as the Galaxy S6 Edge Plus, I was pretty satisfied with the Note 5. It did good, although I don't know what's going on with it right now. Hopefully the iPhone 6 Plus can do better in the future with the 6S with a stronger construction, better display. Let's see what you got, Apple. Surprise us. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. I had fun. I really enjoy making these kind of videos, testing the true durability, the true limits of these phones. So thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video. It really does help me. And comment. Tell me what you think, guys. So have a great day.